monster unlike any other. Hello. Armed to the teeth. Nothing can escape the swarm. Okay, seriously, who's who's putting in these? Who's who? What are these clips? This is not. I want. Can we Akura Vashimu, please? Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, fellow hunters, welcome. As today we talk one hell of a giant scorpion, a carapacean by the name of well. Akura Vishimu. He is one of Frontier's earliest creations, and he is quite unlike anything else. I mean, of course he is. He's a bloody great big scorpion with crystals growing out of him. I mean, that's an absolutely fabulous concept for a monster, and it's so like, duh? Like, wh how has this not happened before? How did it take until Frontier did this to get Giant Scorpion the monster? Of all the arch types of animals to make an appearance, you'd think the scorpion would be up there relatively early on. It's iconic. The pincers, the tail, the shape of it. it there's nothing else really quite like it on Earth, and it is a, a shape that drives a lot of fear in a lot of people, but also a lot of fascination too. They really are quite cool little creatures, and for the most part, save a few of them, are really quite harmless. They're just kind of badass little gladiators. So, when it comes to this monster then, Kuro Vashimu, well, it's known as the Tail Crystal Scorpion, because it's got a crystal on its tail and it's a scorpion. So, I guess, I mean, points for, points for accuracy? Now, it might come across as a fairly simple encounter, especially as you see the first back and forths as Hunt begins, but there is actually a serious amount of complexity here, to the point where perhaps it's a little bit too much. This creature, to give you a little example, has four different colours of blood, and depending on which colour blood it's currently bleeding will change how the flight goes, and you have to identify the correct colour blood so you know what to expect. What? Okay, but let's start at the beginning. Uh, the uh, Kurovashimu is from, and this might be an absolute devastating shock, the Akura region. I know, I know. Though then again, uh, the uh, actual map of the Monster Hunter world seems to kind of change to fit whatever it needs to be as new games, new areas, new lands get added, but it's still nice to have some actual geographical context. Though that said, he can live essentially everywhere. He is incredibly adaptable, a nocturnal hunter, and they come in wild. <laughs> I wanted to say waves and swarms at the same time, and I ended up... <laughs> There are cycles then of Akura Vashimu, times when there is barely any scene, and then times where thousands upon thousands hatch and swarm and act as a scourge upon the land. It is this latest spawning that got them discovered, as one had not happened for a long, long time, and this latest swarm that got them high on the guild's please hunt them all Jesus Christ giant scorpions are killing everyone list. And uh, they... Uh, primarily function by a special secretion, a special body fluid that they possess. As key to uh, it as silk would be to a spider, it's how it does everything that it does. Indeed, the crystals that are growing on it are formed of this liquid hardened. Hell, even its shell, its chitin, is uh, this substance hardened in a different composition. And this substance can be blasted out of its tail and latch onto hunters. And the crystals, when not affixed to the scorpion itself, become volatile and eventually will explode, but not before growing across and crippling any poor soul that is afflicted. But it's not just constructing crystal. No, it's somewhat of an all-purpose, all-solution, magical, do-everything juice. And I don't like saying that in the context of Monster Hunter, and admittedly this is Frontier, but let me, let me break it down for you. So... 
it flows through his body, and his body temperature can change, which in effect will change the temperature of this special liquid. This is how he can essentially live anywhere, because it can either provide him with extreme extra heat, extra insulation, or it can allow him to give off excess heat really efficiently, from freezing to boiling environments, it doesn't really matter, because he's essentially got onboard biological liquid cooling that can vary depending on his needs. But it goes even beyond that. This liquid is exceptionally good at protecting against breaking down and neutering, well, elements and statuses. Seriously, Akura Vishimu is immune to all status elements and is not weak to any single element. Bullshit. Because of this fluid he has coursing through him that he can use as a weapon too. It is colorless and it can uh, gain color depending on the situation that he's in and the use of it being more of a shimmery blue when it's outside the body. That is quite the defensive system. But I'm not done yet! No, he can also use it to repair himself. If he cracks his shell, if it breaks, if he loses a bit, he can literally spray more on from his own tail and then it will harden and grow over the wound and act as replacement shell. He is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to his both defensive qualities and uh, the sheer utility that is provided by uh, this liquid also giving him access, as I said earlier, to the unique status of crystallization. He can paralyze, too, the fine little hairs growing between his plate segments are paralytic in nature should you brush with them. So he really is armed to the teeth, which I guess makes sense for a scorpion who, you know, they, they do appear to be armed to the teeth. It's like, why do you need a huge sticking tail and pincers? Jesus Christ! And uh, that's quite appropriate in that sense. So, uh, he uh, has uh, his little swarming spawning season, runs around the place, destroying, eating, killing everything in the local environment. He does, however, have one unstoppable natural predator that can eat, devour, destroy adult uh, Vashimus in an instant, and that is Odobatorosu, a big old tortoise-looking thing that permanently has a face like, ah! Ah, ah! And he is quite interesting. Someone I want to talk about too, actually. But he was discovered because of the Akurovashimu swarm, because he responded as their natural predator to, you know, the buffet now on display. Spending most of their days slumbering and resting and keeping to themselves in great underground caverns, at night time, as I said, they go on the prowl. They use their crystals to reflect moonlight and uh, cause anglerfish-esque lures to other creatures that once they get too close to investigate are then sprung upon, ambushed from beneath the ground, grabbed and, uh, well, mercilessly slaughtered. So now let's address the two most, let's say, unique parts of this creature, as if everything I haven't already said is a little bit... Okay, then. The blood. As you break its parts, its blood will change in color, which will then reflect how he fights against you. So, if his pincers that were as sharp as a Shogun Cenotaur's claws weren't enough and they can go through rock... Well, beware the blood. It will begin then with grey blood spouting out of it. When uh, you do damage, when you hurt it, when you weaken it and break apart, well then it will turn to a kind of greenish yellow blood. Following that with another break, you uh, will get blue blood. And the blue blood phase is quite important, but then finally it will go to your regular run-of-the-mill red blood. But beware, during red blood it can hip check. Oh, anyway, oh, what was I saying? Okay, cool. Oh, 
Let's talk the tail. The tail, the tail, the tail. As you might imagine, the tail of a scorpion is quite important, and when it comes to Kurovashimu, it is too. I mean, it's where he sprouts the liquid from, and without it, he loses his main weapon, as denoted by the huge ball of crystals from it hardening as it dribbles from the end. But that's not what we're going to talk about. What we're going to talk about is cutting it off. He has the most complex and difficult to achieve, arguably, tail sever in all of Monster Hunter. So, if you would like to break the tail and slice it off of an Akura Vashimu, simply, step one, break his claw with blunt damage. Step two, break his other claw with blunt damage. Step three, break his head with blunt damage. Step four, break his claw now that it's not got crystals with severing damage. Step five, break his other claw again also with severing damage. Step six, break his face again with severing damage. Then he will flip onto his back. Then simply repeat this three times without allowing him to heal his wounds with his crystally goo. And then on the third flip over on his back, if you've done enough damage to his tail during the other flips too, he will get his tail severed, but only if he is currently bleeding blue blood. Congratulations, you've cut off his tail, but wait! Don't let him eat it, because otherwise you won't get your calves. Yes, he will actively, spitefully, and aggressively eat his own tail, so you can't have it. Uh, then uh, his tail will crystallize, grow over, and you will be in a much better position to fight him. Simple, right? Oh my god! <laughs> Like, I mean, I like the idea of a tail cut being almost like a puzzle, something you really have to work for, especially when it's on a monster who, without their tail, is severely crippled. But, Christ, that is a sequence of events, isn't it? Oh, oh my word. So there you go, that's Shurika of Ashimu. The fight against him is fairly straightforward in terms of just avoiding his moves and killing him. He's not the highest tier of monsters, a kind of low flagship level, and you have various swipes and stomps and beams and crystal and physical and ground and you know the kind of things you've been seeing them. But what makes him unique really, really does make him unique. But of course, there is more to him. There is a blue blood paralysis gas. Akura Vishimu, very, very catchy name. It is always enraged and it will be huffing black smoke and it basically turns the paralysis of his hairs up to 11 and makes them quite weirdly long. Then there is a hardcore version of him, which, as you know, the hardcore monsters are just amped up, powerful individuals. His hair turns yellow, and he's got a few new moves, 360 tail spins, extra sprays of crystal, leave marks over the ground, then they explode, and uh, his hip check in red blood is so powerful he will fall over when using it. So. You think about that. And then finally, there is a Zenith, a Kurovashimu. And the Zeniths are, well, the big deal, the big boys. They are absolutely, unbelievably powerful, and they really do stand at the pinnacle of monsters. And in our nice little Scorpion's case, well, his crystalline nature gets amped up to 11. More crystals growing out of him, much more colourful too. His crystal mace on the end of his tail is absolutely massive, and they are much larger and smarter than their normal counterpart. You have a different colour of hair too, much darker than his uh, contemporaries gains a pin attack where they can jump on hunters and savage them with their pincers, as well as an absolute arsenal of crystal geode explodey detonation attacks with their now even increased in potency liquid running through them. Oh, and also their paralysis becomes extreme paralysis, which is like normal paralysis. But, like, EXTREME! No, once you recover from it as you would normal paralysis, you keep being intermittently stunned, which will cancel your attacks and your items and generally be incredibly annoying. 
So there you have it. That is a little introduction to uh, the uh, Akura Vishimu and everything he entails. There is a very similar monster in the form of Akura Jebia, but that is, you know, a whole other species. Much like a Daimyo Hermitar, he is not the same as a Shogun Cenotar, but he is worth mentioning because I think he looks much cooler uh, than our focus today. In any case, so uh, what uh, do you uh, think of him? Would you like to see the Scorpion return? I have very mixed feelings, because on one hand, yes, bloody scorpion monster, fantastic, let's have it, here we go, I want this, and I need it, and I do like the idea of a monster that has this hardening crystal liquid, right, they can paint over their own wounds, make new armor, create structures from it as they laser the ground, that's really neat, but I definitely would think that a Kurvashima is a little bit on the too complex side of things, not that complexity is inherently bad, but it's not in a fun way. That kind of tail cutting effort is is kind of ridiculous. Though again, I do like the idea of a monster that is uniquely immune to all statuses and uniquely not weak to any element. It's just a pure battle with no trickery involved, as it were. For me, I think I really, really want a uh, scorpion monster. I just want a different scorpion monster. I want the archetype, but not specifically the Shimu here, though there's definitely elements of him that I think would be fantastic to carry over, and just seeing how visually a giant scorpion would be done in current modern day Monster Hunter would be glorious. A lot of uh, Frontier players that I've asked say that he isn't that fun to fight, but he is cool, and they have hunted him a lot. In fact, he is in the top five most hunted Frontier monsters across the entire game's history, so there's certainly something to that. In any case, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, let me know what you think, and please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. Until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye